Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. How are you? I had a little bit of a miracle uh, happen in the fish room and I want to tell you all about it. Let's go ahead and get right into it. This is Gary. Gary is a mystery snail. And he had been missing for about four days. He lives here in this uh, planted aquarium experiment that I'm carrying out here. That Heiger eight gallon horizon tank. And I, I didn't see him anywhere for about four days. I was wondering about him. I even mentioned him in a couple videos. Well, I found him on the floor and he was pretty dried out. And so, well, I thought to myself, well, you messed up, Gary. He must have come up and pushed his way out of this light condensation tray cover that I have on top of this tank. I suspect he came out through this side over here because this side was up, up a bit. He was lying on the floor on top of this uh, plastic piece that I use to level out the aquarium and he was right on top of it which might have, might have broke his fall a little bit probably a little softer than the concrete floor his shell was cracked the edges of it were chipped away and he was completely dry totally dry there was a hard shell there was sort of a hard shell that had formed separating him from the outside. And I thought to myself, okay, before I throw them away, what if aquatic snails have a way of sealing themselves up to maintain the moisture in, inside the shell in case, uh, in case they can get back in water, like if a tide changes or a water level changes, maybe they've adapted that way. So before I threw them in the trash, I figured, well, you know what? I think I'll go ahead and, uh, put them in a glass of water, and I did. And the next morning, he was alive. He went from being crispy dry, at least the part of him that I could feel, he went from being crispy dry to uh, back at it. And here he is. It's alive, it's alive, it's alive. I never had that happen. I don't know how long he was on the floor. He was missing, for me, he was missing about four days. As well as cherry barbs that live in the tank. I guess the moral of the story is before you throw that snail away that crawled out of your tank, just be sure he's dead. Put him in some water. If he's created a hard, crusty uh, cover that. Um, is sealing in all the moisture, perhaps they can last several days. And then when they get back in water, they revive like he's done. So, uh, welcome back, Gary. It, some of you might have noticed that this tank is missing a uh, large plant that was located right here in the middle. And that was a Anubius that was attached to a piece of driftwood and that Anubius has been moved back here and is now uh, a little bit of a playground for Mr. Mustard. Love the fins on that guy. So this Anubius is doing well. This tank uh, has a little bit of those liquid vitamins from the aquarium co-op. Easy green. That should help. And th this tank here, I use easy green, but I also have some of those tabs underneath the uh, substrate to help out the plants that are in the substrate. You can see some of them here. I'm also using easy green and tabs for the swords that are in this tank here. 
and that easy green liquid probably helps the Anubias that are in that piece of driftwood right there. So that's the miracle in the uh, <laughs> miracle in the fish room. I had no idea that a snail could get actually hard and crunchy like that and uh, come back to life. It must be some adaptive, uh, some adaptation they've developed over the over the centuries, where uh, if a tide goes down, let's say, they, they can seal they can seal off the shell, and uh, and and retain moisture inside, and then when water returns, they can. Uh, they can go ahead and come back out again because he was he was sealed. It was a hard, like a hard, uh, you know, crunchy cover, dry door on his shell that he had retreated back into. So uh, that's amazing. I thought it was amazing. So that's it for me. Let's just take a real quick look at the fish before we end off. What do you say? Ninety gallon continues to be relatively peaceful, despite having some notoriously uh, aggressive fish in here like a Salvini, a Nicaragua, and uh, there's a Jack Dempsey back there. And a big vieja that's about to come up. There he is. Not sure if that's a he or a she. Beautiful fish. Love the reddish pink around the gills. And of course, we've got the, the Geos, Serimonensis, or red striped earth eaters. A couple of them. AC Hecali up here. There's a red shoulder being shy. She likes to hang back. You saw the other two two tanks behind this one, and here's the uh, my most peaceful tank. Redhead Tapajos. Some Severums in there. Love those Severums. Beautiful chocolates. Always changing their patterns and colors depending on their mood. It's got spots today, and the other one is more more solid in color. You also go into a chocolate color sometimes, a purple brown chocolate color. Whole bunch of these little uh, dwarf rainbows. Very cute. Some of, them, some of them are very round, silver dollar like, and some of them are pretty slim. And of course you've got uh, Little green tear down here. We have our Zonatus, Vieja Zonatus, and a little cave that he built. Separated. We have an OB. It's called a Skittles OB. Skittles is a type of OB that is sold by the Cichlid Shack over in Tempe, Arizona, one of the sponsors of my channel. I pulled uh, the expert Matic that was on this side of the tank it was starting to make some noise, so I had to pull it out. I was thinking about pulling it out anyway because I have filtration on this side with that Marineland Emperor 400. And then I had that power head on this side. So I took out the power head from this side and replaced it with an expert Matic. So now I have filtration on both sides.
both sides of this tank and water movement on both sides. A lot of micro bubbles on this side. But that power head was a little bit too much for a divided tank. I had it in there originally because the tank was full of peacocks and I wanted to create more oxygen, but it wasn't needed anymore. So I have that Hyger. I think it's about 2,500 gallons per hour. I'll probably end up using it in the 300 gallon project. So thanks all for tuning in, and if you have any uh, experience with something like that, with that snail, what happened with me with that snail, uh, definitely mention in the comments below. I'd like to hear if you've had something like that happen with a snail. I mean, I've, I've never had snails before. I could never keep them because I had African cichlids, and I think they would just go ahead and eat them. And uh, so it was a new thing for me, and of course, when I find something out of the tank, it would be a fish, and that's usually a goner, right, when you find one of those out there dry and crispy. So um, comment below, let me know what you think, and I hope to see you on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream, 9 a.m. Pacific, 11 Central, and noon Eastern time. Hope to see you then. Bye-bye.